I'm Nick Sohn from Brennan IT, and we're back with another one of our Executive Insights. Today, I'm sitting down with Brendan Cook, the former CEO of O Media, and now the Chairman of the Advisory Board for Brennan IT. Thanks for joining us, Brendan. Pleasure to be here, Nick. You have been, uh, you spent a career in media, and uh, now you're on the advisory board of an IT company. What prompted the move? <laughs> it's a good question, isn't it? Um, well, firstly, um, talking about Brennan IT, you don't uh, be involved in a business unless you do a lot of research. And obviously, I knew Brennan had a great reputation. Um, and what you find out that it's, uh, you know, as a company that's 24 years old, it's been growing consistently, uh, has great people, great talent, um, and obviously is financially strong. So that's, that's the first thing you want to do. The second thing is probably very selfish in reality. Um, you know, at the end of the day, um, managed service, cyber, cloud are going to be critically growing in expensive areas of all businesses. And what better way to really learn about a business uh, or a sector than to actually be really in a business like Brennan that is very hands-on protecting other businesses. Yeah, look, I think that's, uh, they're all valid points actually, Brendan. Now, how important do you think technology is for businesses? It is without doubt going to be um, one of the most critical expenses. Um, digital transformation, uh, technology transformation for businesses is, is going to continue to be a board issue, continue to be a business issue, continue to be a change management issue and a growth issue. And in all businesses' cases, they have to continue to, to look at that technology investment and really plan and understand to do that, how to do that. And, and you know, that's going to be something that will, I think, only grow and grow and grow. It won't go backwards. And it's grown enough as it is. It will continue to grow. And from the boardroom, do you think that uh, technology can be seen as a differentiator? Uh, amongst Australian businesses? More than a differentiator, it is actually probably a lifeblood. Um, I was reading recently where something like less than 10% of companies have truly undergone, um, whether it be technology, digital transformation, systems transformation, however label you want to give it, but the transformation to how you need to run a business, behave with your customers um, in the world we live in today. And so um, that's going to continue to be one of the biggest issues that every business faces, uh, continuing to look for those efficiencies, those improvements, uh, those better experiences for customers. And that will, in most instances, be a majority technology-led approach. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, well, I've got you in the boardroom. Uh, what, what are you, you know, when you, when you think about cybersecurity, uh, what, are the, what do you think the, you know, how, how does that resonate in the boardroom and what do you think it means for Australian uh, organisations? If you went back as little as a, a few years ago, um, maybe the top 50 companies in Australia had it as part of their board reports. Today, along with um, the CFA reporting the financials, not the CEO, the uh, Work Health and Safety officers reporting their Work Health and Safety, cyber is now a reportable mandatory at every board meeting. Mm -hmm. And, and I think uh, we're going to see that continually to grow. You only have to look at recent press where you see Nine Entertainment Group, uh, the global meat company, JCB, which affected meat supply, you know, the pipelines in the US, um, mm -hmm. all attacked, um, whether it be criminal enterprise or state sponsored, who, who knows. But if you go down to any size business, a friend of mine, 10 to $12 million business, let's say 10% EBIT, um, was attacked, the disruption to their business, ransomware attack, the disruption to their business was more than 50% of his net profit. Now, in many instances at the wrong time in a business life, that is catastrophic and can send you bankrupt. So I think cyber, whether it be at major board level or SME or mid-size enterprise, mid enterprises, it's irrelevant today. Uh, we're all vulnerable and we've all got to continually work on our protections both with um, technology, but just as importantly, and probably even more important, our weakest link, which is our own staff. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Uh, so what's your uh, little bit of advice for anyone thinking about their cyber security posture? I think the difficulty is there's no right or wrong answer on what you spend. And that was the challenge that I think we as a, 
you know, in, in boards and business leaders face. So it's trying to, to, trying to say that um, understand your attack vectors and trying to work out how you, how you minimise the opportunity. At the end of the day, we've just seen major organisations and even government bodies with what we're probably spending a fortune uh, get attacked. So if you just want to minimise how you get attacked. So my advice would be um, not worry about how much you're spending, but make sure you are spending what you think is enough based on your risk profile. Don't, uh, don't uh, underestimate the power of just ensuring your staff are well trained, uh, have phishing, uh, in-house phishing attacks, et cetera, et cetera, so that you actually can ensure that they don't become the weak point. And most times, uh, well, in every time that I talk to someone who's been cyber attacked, you actually find out it, the weak link was something the staff member did. So we hear that time and time again here at Brennan as well. Uh, well, I've got you on the uh, topic of staff. Uh, you know, we've got, uh, it's a fairly tight employment market at the moment and, uh, you know, staff attraction and retention are really important in a company like Brennan IT and no doubt in um, many other companies out there. Uh, what tips have you got for us on uh, how we attract and retain great people? You know, whilst we've talked a lot about technology, at the end of the day, people make businesses. Um, they are the, the most critical asset you have in your business. So I like to think of it this way. I mean, salaries ultimately become a hygiene. They're, they're not the be end and all end of everything. Um, competitive, yes, but they're not the be end, end and all. Um, to me, it's about culture. It's about a place that I like to come to work. Um, it's about um, a respect amongst your teammates and your peers uh, given to you as an individual. And it's about training and improvement. And I think if you get those elements, which are never easy, if you can get all those elements right, then you can attract and retain people because at the end of the day, we spend so much time involved in our work and with our peers, uh, often more than our families, that the reality is if you don't get those rights, then it's probably not a great experience in your life. So quite famously, uh, you never went to university. Yes. Uh, so you've kind of come up through the school of hard knocks, so to speak. Uh, what's the uh, biggest mistake you think you made? <laughs> well, first, th there are two, actually. The, the first one I never made, because I made mistakes. If you don't make mistakes, then you don't learn. And if you don't make decisions, you never get anything done. So, you know, we can't be paralyzed by not making mistakes. So what is interesting, given this conversation, if I look back through the whole career, and there were many mistakes, many lost money, it was when we undertook uh, technology and digital transformation. Um, and, and this was back in 2016, um, and the world's moved a lot since then, and we've learned a lot. And to me, the biggest mistake there was the planning of what you're going to undertake the education and training of teams before you do one actual thing. And it's not a month, um, because you have to really get everyone ready for what it means to go through the process, which in most instances isn't a couple of months, it's a multi-year multi -year program. And as part of that, the recognition from leadership teams, management boards, that you may have to take people who are the best in certain areas of your business and out of their day-to-day -day job and put them into the program uh, to be the expert in that program. And that means you've got to think of the cost isn't just what you think you're spending, is there's a lot of other costs that you've got to incur. And um, I think what we saw and what I certainly saw was the consultants and experts you brought in didn't get to the heart of the real issue. They told you outcomes but didn't get you the preparation. And I think I would spend more time on preparation and planning and thinking through and acting upon with training how we prepare everyone for the change. Thanks, Brendan. Uh, great to have you on our Executive Insights. Uh, and of course, if you're looking for some cybersecurity help, come and talk to us here at Brennan IT.